Hello. Hi. How's How are going? you? You're doing all right. <laughs> Thanks for you? doing this. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, thanks for having me. Of course. I love your background. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Are you, I, I saw you were in Sandy. Are you in Fallbrook? I'm in Fallbrook right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah we're, we're in San Diego too. I thought that was cool. Um, I'm actually yeah. coming to San Diego tonight. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you're not far away. It's no, perfect. not at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, were you born and raised in, in California? No, Indiana. Indiana? Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was born and raised in Indiana in a little town called Kokomo and, you know, play, moved out, moved when I was 18 to start a band. Ended up going to Florida, um, doing a project there and I was a body piercer and then moved to Chicago, then back to Indiana and then I moved out here four years ago. Wow. Cool. Cool. Very cool. What was a lot all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. So Indiana, where, where, what was the first instrument you learned how to play? Guitar. Guitar? Oh, actually, yeah. I mean, I took piano lessons when I was in grade school. I'm not a great pianist, but guitar was definitely the, the main thing. Very cool. And then did you start writing songs, just playing? Like, tell me about mm -hmm. your, your journey. Yeah, I just started writing. I learned um, three chords out of a Mel Bay chord book that my dad had and he had an, um, an acoustic guitar and I just that's I learned like D E G and E and then that was over I just wrote my first song and <laughs> <laughs> went from there and then right. you know Courtney Love, I was a huge Hole fan so I got a Fender Squire Venus which oh, was co-designed cool. So I, yeah, my friend has that guitar in Orlando. She's holding on <laughs> to it holding for me. Holding it for you? Around. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Well, so you, yeah. you started playing, you, you learned, or you learned those chords and started writing songs. Did you start a band, like when you were living in mm -hmm. Indiana? Yeah, well, I, and stuff? yeah, I did. Um, so I was in, I was playing like acoustic shows at coffee houses and things. And when I had moved to, Florida, I put a band together. It was called Pretty Machine Gun with David Van Bremen and Darren Mason. Um, and that was just super awesome. It was my first recording experience. I was 21. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a three song kind of EP and we played shows a lot. And then that broke up. And I stopped kind of doing music for a while because I started, I, um, I got pregnant and then I started going to school in Indiana. I went to Indiana University. Mm -hmm. And then I got married in my, and I was actually playing at a coffee house acoustically, just some songs that I had written when I met my then husband. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like a whirlwind. I was, we were married within six months of meeting each other. And he played the stand up bass. And it was, a, he played a fretless upright. And it was, he's just such a talented person. And he also plays guitar. And he was just like, you know, Linz, why don't you play bass? It's super easy. You're going to love it. <laughs> and I want to play guitar. And, and we'll have our friend Christian Raquel, Raquel May, who I was in Color Guard in high school. And I went to, he was in band. Oh, so he wow. played drums. Um, so our, that little band was called We're Not Mexican. Because Christian's Chilean. And everybody is always like, ah, he's Mexican. He always got called a Mexican. Oh, so the sure. Band was We're Not Mexican. And, and that was like a rockabilly kind of like um, X. That's kind of mm -hmm. like what the music reminded me of. So, and then after we divorced, that band broke up and I had moved to Indianapolis and I uh, started Girls Rock Indianapolis with a co I was a co-founder of that and mm -hmm. had me on Love Life. And that was a big deal for a while. Then that broke up, Kaleida Stars, then that, Picture Yes, and then boom, Cold hired me. <laughs> so it was, it was like all of, the, all of the crazy bands. I remember like collectively between me and the girls in Neon Love Life, we were like, oh, we've, we've been in like 28 bands, all of us, like, <laughs> like oh, all wow. of the bands. Between yeah, everybody. Yeah, between everybody. Was, but you know, that was fun. So That's yeah. That's cool, yeah, wow, wow. So you started Neon Love Life, and that was in 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 Indiana, and that's where you also started the the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? And were you were you in Indiana for a while there, getting that all going? 
Yeah, I was in Indiana for, God, I, a long time because I moved back um, from Florida back in 2004 and had my daughter. So mm-hmm. 2004 until 2015, 2016, I moved out here in 2016. So yeah, I was there for 12 years. Wow. Okay. Well, with Neon. Uh, with Neon oh my God, I feel like I'm getting so old. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, tell me about it. <laughs> uh, what did you tour us up with Neon Love Life? No. Oh, that's a whole thing in and of itself. And I talk a lot about that in the book. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to get to the, the book, book for sure. That was, it was really like I wanted to tour so bad, and it's so funny because I was just in Indiana last week. I went to visit my daughter, and I was going through all my storage stuff and we had an original Neon Love Life shirt that I was like, I just so wish I had it. Cause I, we had, uh, there's a fan that comes to cold shows and he wears this original Neon Love Life shirt. Cause he's like been around for a long time. That's cool. And I found one and I brought it back and it's a me, it was my size. I was, and it was all <laughs> like folded up, like in the merch stuff that's been sitting in storage for a million years. <laughs> and it was just like, I was so happy. So I've got this Neon Love Life shirt. So anyway, we had bought all these t-shirts to tour, but what had happened is nobody was like me as far as the drive to do music and do music full time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Tasha was a massage therapist and she always worried about clients. Um, Ashley wanted to, uh, she joined the Air Force and now she is an abortion provider um, for a Planned Parenthood. And she's really been, always been into women's rights and very politically active. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so proud of her and she just had a baby um, and she's in Denver and I'm, yeah, I just talked to her last week <laughs> and Sharon, Sharon's just doing the girls rock thing. And she's the, I think she's the president probably. I don't, I don't ever talk to Sharon. It's been years and years and years since I've spoke with her, but I talked to Ashley a lot. She came That's to cool. see us in Denver when we played. Nice. Cold. Yeah. yeah. And then I read that you joined cold because they, well, they needed a bass player, but then you have a tattoo of theirs that just kind of like mm-hmm. sealed the deal. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that story. Because <laughs> I've been on the cold army street team. I got this, t- this tattoo in Tampa, like the, back in the early two thousands. I was like, wow. literally it's been 20 years since I've had this tattoo. Um, and I always played and I always, I put it here because I was always the lead singer Oh, and I was okay. like, oh, if I, I always will represent, like if I'm holding a mic like that. And yeah. so <clears throat> that's, that was that. But then I just started playing instruments more and I just was playing bass so much. And so I was, it was kind of a situation where I was on tour with a band called Picture Yes. And we were the direct support for Saving Able for like almost an entire year. So I was in a van with five guys. <laughs> just traveling, <laughs> traveling the United States, like going from city to city doing shows. And, and I'm in love with that. Like, I love touring. It's my favorite. I'm a road warrior. It's my favorite thing. I love connecting with fans. I love playing the, the rush and the high of all of that. And that, mm-hmm. even like the lows, when the, when the sh- shitty and you're broke down, <laughs> like none of that matters. It's all just an adventure to me. And well, somebody in like the cold army was at one of those shows because some you know saving able has fans that are cold fans and mm-hmm. they sent my photo to the theater and they're like dude she's playing the bass she's awesome and here's this so then they did some research so i got then, a call and then you and the just went crazy. yeah did you just go audition that was six years ago wow. no i didn't even have to audition <laughs> they're like she's in <laughs> yeah, yeah was, i mean uh, i'm super honored but I mean, I definitely paid my dues. <laughs> yeah, not, sure. It's not like, you know, I've done a lot. And there's lots of video and things of all the bands and everything out there. So, but no, I had to learn all their songs though. And I had to get a, you know, I bought a new bass and tuned it all down because we play two steps down. And yeah, it was crazy. And they had a lot. So that's I mean, a lot. There's a few, yeah. They have a they've, huge- Blog. I was Crazy. gonna say, don't they have like they have like a handful of records, right? That you had to you yeah, had to learn. Re- yeah, the six. We just oh. released the six studio album. And the six one you're on, right? Yes. You're yes. on the six one. That's cool. So that was your first experience recording with with Cold. Was that pretty cool? Oh, it was amazing. 
and they're so nice and we just all just really meshed well in the studio Mm -hmm. and at the time I mean really that that whole it was me and Scooter and Nick because we're we've been the main core for a while and um Sam Mm -hmm. wasn't on that album because he wasn't going to be in the band so it was really great that we got him back but um and Johnny just joined right before tour as well so but it was mainly Scooter and Nick and and I that's awesome most of the way Mm -hmm. yeah very cool. And now you have a book out. I want to hear all about this book. And it's, it, I read that it's been like four years in the, in the, in the making, but you were able mm-hmm. kind of to, to focus directly on it for, for a while, right? Is that kind of what happened? Yeah, I mean, it, I, I basically put it down for about a year because we were doing the album and we were working and just, we were going to tour and stuff. And, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but my plan after um, I, we got through like Nam and the Grammy stuff this past well, it was, um, it was what, January and February. We were going to be going on tour on April 2nd. That was when we were going to start on the East Coast. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to find an editor. Because I had originally sent it to so many agents, <clears throat> like the query letter, the proposal, everything that you do to get a publisher. Like a publisher, yeah. And everybody, yeah, and everybody was like, no. We don't want to represent this. Nobody really knows you. Or you don't have a platform. All this stuff, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" It was so frustrating. Like I have a whole mm-hmm. um, folder in my emails of this labeled book rejections. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so I was like, "Okay." So, I'll, so then I was like, "I'm just gonna do this myself." So I was looking for an editor online, and somebody saw that. Well, Rose Gold saw that and a representative reached out to me and they were like, well, Dolly's interested in this. So please send over your manuscripts. And within 24 hours, she had written me back and she was like, we want this. Absolutely. Whoa, that's cool. And I had like, so within a 48 hour period, I'd signed a contract and we got to working on it. So, and this was all happening, before, you know, pre COVID. Mm-hmm. So I'm working with the editor, the editor sending me notes going through everything with Dolly. We're on Zoom meetings nonstop. And then COVID happened, like two days before I was supposed to leave for the East Coast. So it was like literally March 15th. And I was supposed to leave March 17th. And so I was like, okay, I guess we're going to like be able to, since this is happening and there's nothing we can do about it, we had to postpone the tour. And we've since postponed, like those dates had been moved to October, November, and sure. we've now had to postpone it completely. So nobody's touring in 2021. It's unfortunate, but that's, I mean, that's really what has to happen. Yeah, <laughs> we don't it's want crazy. Yeah, the whole, the whole, whole year show, you know? of no shows, pretty much it's been. It's, oh, it's, it's depressing as fuck. I mean, it yeah. really is. I'm, and then yesterday was my birthday and all of these. Happy know, birthday. Fans, and I saw a picture on the Colds there. Instagram. I was going to tell you that, and then I spaced. <laughs> oh, it's okay. But somebody put on the Cold Army. They're like, everybody post your photos with Lindsay in honor of her day. And so there's all of these tour photos. Just, oh my God. And so it was a little crushing. A little sure. bit of, I was talking to Scooter, and I was like, all these photos make me miss everything so much. But Anyway, so the silver lining, blessing in disguise, detour in whatever direction Mm -hmm. um, was that I was able to focus on the book and we got it out. So, because when you're on the road, I was supposed to be doing this on the road. um, Mm -hmm. It's really hard to focus on anything like reading and doing editing and working with somebody when you're playing shows and you're a bus full of dudes. It's just next to impossible. Like, even like I'm a huge meditator. Mm-hmm. On tour, it's kind of hard to meditate. <laughs> yeah, like I, could, I would think that. If, your little coffin bunk and <laughs> yeah, and there's um, people around and the bus is going. There's people everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's good, you know. And I'm, it's really resonating with fans, and a lot of people are. I'm getting messages every day, and it's it's a, it's scary. It was a scary thing, but now I'm excited because people are connecting with it. Yeah. So unfuckwithable. And what is there like, is, is it like a biography or autobiography or is there like, tell me about the book, like what, what it's about. Well, for me, I call it, um, it's like a memoir, but it's also a personal development book, like mm-hmm. self-help, I guess. Sure. Um, okay. And there's, yeah, there's suggestions, but it's, it shares my story and like, 
you know, from being bullied and being in horribly abusive relationships and um, losing yourself and finding yourself and how music always, you know, brings you back in and just, you know, positivity and how you see things. I, you know, I just want people to mainly find the power within themselves to actually make a change in their life for the mm -hmm. better because it, I ask a lot of questions that are really hard questions to answer because people tend to just live on autopilot sure. versus what do I really love? Like, what is it that makes me feel good and what drives me? And mm -hmm. so that's what, you know, those are the questions I'm asking. Wow. And when so you see, you started the book, what, about four years ago, you said? Yeah, in 2016. What made you decide to write a book? Like, how did it all start? Um, breaking, getting out of an abusive relationship. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> going, yeah. going through the whole process of, okay, I'm breaking up with this person and this has like been a thing for three years and he's been in my life and he was in my band and it was just bad. It's a horrible, horrible, he was a terrible person. <laughs> I, I hope that he's not anymore, but it was just like a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was living with Scooter at the time. So he's, you know, watched me go through like all of it. Um, and I just started reading all of these spirituality books like Dr. Wayne, Wayne Dyer and Eckhart Tolle and Gabrielle Bernstein and really getting to a place where I was at peace and okay with the decisions that I was making. Mm -hmm. And you know, my girlfriend, she was like, you're making yourself unfuckwithable. And I was like, I think I'm going to write a book. <laughs> and I literally started it the next day. Really? Wow. That's cool. I mean, to be able to channel that energy into something that Ooh, could be positive man, for everybody I'm else too. Right, right. I'm an artist though. And I have to, I have to be constantly writing, constantly busy, constantly be doing something or I'll go crazy. I'll get into all the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All of the trouble. <laughs> All of the trouble. <laughs> so the book is out now. And what do you, are you like, have you done anything? Like, how do you promote it with, with the current climate? Do you just. Well, you know, I'm promoting through um, social interviews. media and mm -hmm. interviews and podcasts hitting the circuits pretty well. Um, I've got a lot of, you know, people are reading it and posting how much they love it. And every time somebody does, I, you know, more books sell. And I've got a yeah. lot of, I've got a lot of friends that have really like, um, have promoted it on. Yeah. I saw like Matt Pinfield posted it and that's Matt really cool. And, yeah. Daniels and, um, yeah, Stevie Salas. So uh -huh. all the, yeah. And I'm going to get, you know, I've got some friends that I'm sending copies to right now. Nice. Allison Haggardorf has one. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she'll post her. it yeah <laughs> maybe she'll post something i don't know but i mean it's selling really well and I'm not, I'm not i'm really not too concerned about it i think i, I just wanted to organically grow in mm -hmm. something have you I'm done like, gonna it if I can. yeah have you gone like would you do like readings of it or anything like that like have you dabbled no with that? Like, i mean it was really just released uh, it's only been released for a month and I was so busy like with the candle company and doing things and my daughter was starting color guard band camp mm. and I was like I have to get to Indiana so I literally just got back two days ago because I needed to spend time with her before her yeah, I just needed start. two weeks so I kind of I so I had some books shipped to Indiana and I still worked and got orders out while I was there but she's been my main focus and um my publicist is like okay we're so i'm gonna do some live readings probably we're gonna get some stuff scheduled for august cool i'm just not it hasn't happened today this week has been a blur and i was like trying to give myself a hangover day yesterday and i wasn't even hung over like i didn't even get ripped off. <laughs> I, was say, I was just like oh i got up yesterday and i was like man i feel good i had a couple glasses of wine so I worked on the farm because I work, I live on a farm with um, my best friend, Trisha, and her fiance is Gino Leonardo from Filter. And we work oh, on wow. Music and stuff. And yeah, we've got a studio downstairs. That's so, awesome. Yeah, just, yeah, but we have Airbnbs. We, it's like full days of like turnover and cleaning and 
making sure everything's on point because we live on a you know five acres oh so people will, will come and rent like you have different little like yeah, cottages we've, or something we've on there got a tp and a bell tent and like a little artist bungalow yeah oh, cool Did, is it yeah. have you know, there been a lot of people there even during the quarantine and stuff it hasn't stopped. It's been <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we ended up, but like the, the difference is what we did is like we like the during the first month or so, we were realizing that our Airbnb stuff wasn't going to stop because a lot of people were trying to get out of LA to come down here, mm-hmm. and so we we ordered a bunch of different comforters so we would always have something clean. Oh, that's and good. Just kind of laundry switch, and that, that's a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I can't not, even imagine. Um, and it's always and it's funny because Trisha and I like we've got this candle company, and then the books, and it's like every single day is a rush to five o'clock. Like, are we gonna make it to the post office by five? <laughs> it's like, very scheduled, and it's crazy, but it's fun. Yeah, tell you me should come the... up because you're you're just like an hour away. Less I than would an hour, love actually, to. So like, yeah, like, we're actually in. We're pretty much on the cusp of Escondido, so. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah, you're like, we're like right down right the road. There. Yeah, we're not like in yeah. downtown or anything like that. So we're like literally. Yeah, I'm driving to Rancho Bernardo literally in like two hours. That's where I live. Are you coming That's over? Where I'm <laughs> coming <laughs> to our house. <laughs> so I'm going to my friend. Um, my friend John and Kim wanted to have me over for a little birthday dinner. So. That's amazing. Yeah, how funny. Yeah, we're that's exactly where I live, Rancho Bernardo. So getting off on Rancho Bernardo. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, tell me. So you have a candle company too, and that's all that you you guys make candles up at the yeah. We make candles out of pure coconut wax. Everything's edible, but there's like literally five ingredients, and they're super sustainable. They burn for long periods of time. Like in one candle, you can get fifty hours, fifty to seventy Whoa. hours, depending on. What um, and so we've created candles for cold. So we have a whole cold collection um, and the fans have bu- been buying those, especially since the tour stopped. And since mm-hmm. we started doing the cold candles last year, and it was one of those things where Trisha had this company, like she just started making them. Like we were making them um, in the spring. She taught me how to make candles in the dining room. Like it was mm-hmm. not as, even a thing. It was just like, okay, this is what we're just going to start this. But then when I got back from tour, I was like, what the fuck am I going to do for four months? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so we were like, let's make, a, let's make a candle for the cold fans. And so we did a whole series and it was so utterly successful that we were like, wait, this should be a band thing, right? So mm-hmm. um, we got Motley Crue. Motley Crue has our candles and oh. um, Jonathan Davis. Uh, so we'll, he's selling our candles for his own brand and his custom and all that stuff. So, yeah, we're just kind of reaching out the bands like, okay, this should be a thing because it, it, they're great and they're great for touring. <laughs> yeah. And so that's another thing. Like we were getting, I was, we had bought all this wax to do all these candles right before tour because we were going to sell them on our tour, mm-hmm. and uh, then it it got canceled. So we were like, well, let's put out the 2020 spring collection for so- cold, and so we made we added new scents and we made some new labels and just, and they were, I mean, it totally helped because <laughs> I lost all of my income, you know? And yeah. Wow. That being said, the cold fans really stepped up and. That's great. Candles. Yeah. What the, what the, Not I was going to ask about the up. scents. So you have different scents. So like, what <laughs> did you have to send like Tommy Lee a scent? And he's like, okay. Yeah, Tommy Lee <laughs> actually helped us. Tommy Lee helped in the creation of his scent. It, oh, did he really? Because it's got, um, like, we have one, it's got a lot of Nag Champa in it for his, mm-hmm. but yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, so you but got, you did. Are, the, we, what, is, what, is the, what is the cold um, ones? The, the cold we have, um, it's called Karma, Magic, um, Day at the Spa, and Champagne Mimosa are the four scents that we have for and they're all like named after songs. So there's like mm-hmm. Better Human is Magic. Um, Just Got Wicked is Karma. Um, Without You is Champagne Mimosa. And Quiet Now is Day at the Spa. That's so cool. What a creative idea. I like that. Yeah, yeah they're, it's so much fun. And uh, Scooter loves them. I send them to him all the time. And <laughs> um, I send some to Nick. And yeah, just it's good. That's awesome. Have you guys been able to get together with Cold since quarantine started or no no 
which kind of bums me out. I was in the Midwest and Lifer, you know, Nick's um, side project Lifer. He's the lead singer of that. And mm -hmm. they were playing a car show. So it was like a social distance show. In oh, like a drive-in thing? Mm -hmm. Like a drive-in mm -hmm. show? Okay. And, I was, and also University Drive, who was on tour with us on this last tour. Um, and I love those guys and I want to see them success, succeed. Like I have all of the things because they're so brilliant. Um, they were playing the show and I was going to surprise them, but I was just had been traveling so much. I had driven up to Michigan and I just got back and I was going to go to Ohio and meet up with um, Sean Foist um, from Breaking Benjamin and just drive with their, his side project band because they were playing. Um, oh, cool. And it just didn't work out. There wasn't, uh, I just, it just didn't work out. So yeah. I was kind of. <clears throat> But I, what about like live streams and stuff? How, how yeah, you, but no, I mean, we've those? done that. Okay, so we did a live stream with G. Okay, so we did take a picture, that filter song. Yeah. With um, Candlebox, Earshot, Nick sang it from Lifer, and me and Gino. So that was something that we did that was kind of fun, and it got a bunch of attention, like, like the Corona sessions. This is something that we called it. But we haven't, like... I want to do more live streaming and uh, Gino and I did a couple live in down in his studio where I would sing a cover and we would do some original music because he and I write together all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but really after like this book has taken up all my time. Yeah. The last two months <laughs> of and, I just, and I just got back like two nights ago and um, I came home and I just, I started writing a song because I hadn't played my bass in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah, I have a whole another song that I just need to get out and down. And so that's good. At least that, that's something creative that happened. <laughs> yeah. So when you write a song, like, do you, do you pitch it to cold? Is that what you guys do? Or would you uh, no, put it out yourself? I, you know, because I'll put it out myself. I'll work with um, either Brandon Zano or I'll work with Gino on it. Or um, I'll figure out cause we've got, I've got a lot of people, but Gino typically, um, will let me lay the bass track down and my ideas down in his mm -hmm. studio and then we'll go from there. That's cool. Or he, like, he writes stuff for me, like he'll just write something and then I'll just come up with the lyrics and the melody for what he's written and we'll arrange and do stuff. That's cool. So. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Well, thank you yeah, so much for talking. I was yeah, going to ask, so sure. you have stuff, it's just coming out under your name? Yeah. Or like, Okay, and you have you have you released yeah, anything? It'll come out under, and I haven't released anything yet, but it's okay. still in the works. It gotcha. might take another three months. You know, you know how that stuff. Works. Yeah, but you have and something going that's going to be like a solo thing that's separate than cold. Yeah, and I've always done that. Um, and when I have ideas, just I write so much differently than Scooter, and Scooter has always been the main songwriter for Cold. Period. Right. And, I've gotten to have a little bit of say, like I, there's one song on the new record that I actually did a chord progression for one of the choruses. So they do listen, but I just, you know, if I right. hear something, I'll come to them. If they are, they're into it. Yeah. If not, it's no, no worries. You know, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Cool. Well, thank, again, thank you so much, Lindsay, for, for talking with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I want to yeah, know, I have, one more, I have one more question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, um, don't give up, don't stop. Even if people say it sucks, then go back and listen to it from a different perspective and just keep going and do it yourself if you have to. And even if people say no, fuck the nose, just keep doing it. <laughs> Bring me a bad word.